years ago to see if these are still products I'm using or loving. Pick a word. Hey guys, welcome back to my Where Are They Now series where we revisit favorites videos from a couple of years ago to see if these are still products I'm loving or if they've been replaced by something else instead. And I'm really hoping you can hear this right now because I just filmed this entire video and realized I hadn't turned my microphone on, so we're doing it again. So the July of 2016 favorites video is actually very special. It is very dear to my heart because that video is Tut's YouTube debut. That's right, it is my first video with Tut. So we're gonna get Tut back on here again in a bit to tell you his thoughts, to tell you where he is now. Two years later, let me tell you, he had a lot of thoughts in that first video. So if you wanna check it out, I will leave it down in the comments. I've done a bunch of these videos before. They're some of my favorites to film. I'll link the playlist up here if you wanna check it out because I don't wanna be that person who raves about a product and then literally never mentions it again. So this is just my way of making sure that we are following through and keeping you guys updated. There are some expensive favorites in this video, so I will be giving you drugstore options as we go as well. If you're new, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If you love makeup and cheap shit, you are in the right place. Go ahead and hit subscribe so we can see you next time too. Todd wants you to subscribe. That's important. First up today is the Lorac Pro 3 palette. I do really love this palette. No surprise, I love Lorac eyeshadows. When I filmed that original favorites video, I had just done a palette week where I showed you five of my favorite looks from this palette. I will link it up there if you wanna go see my favorites favorite ways to use it, but I do still really enjoy this palette. You'll have to forgive me, mine is a little messy because a little piece of my black shadow broke and I never, really cleaned it up because I'm disgusting. So this is on my eyes today and like I'm wearing it today, my favorite way to use this palette is just kind of as a neutral, everyday go-to easy look. I think this is particularly well suited for fair skin. If you are somebody that often opens a palette and doesn't have a transition shade light enough for your, for your skin tone, you are going to love this. I mean, look at this top row of mattes. There are so many perfect transition and crease shades in there for those of us on the fairer end of the spectrum. I think the shimmers are really nice in this palette, but they're not as intense as some Lorac shimmers, which again, just makes it great on an everyday basis. There is one shadow in here, which is dreadful, which is medallion. I mean, it's it's unusable. I, I don't know like who decided that could be in there. I'm, I'm not sure, it's absolutely terrible. But the rest are beautiful and do perform nicely. The one thing I will say compared to my other Lorac Pro palettes is that this one is even more powdery. Lorac shadows in general are very powdery, especially the Pro formula. Um, they're just really soft and buttery and that, that can be powdery in the pan. This one seems to be a little bit worse than the others. So if that's something that bothers you, you're not going to like it. That doesn't bother me because I like how it looks on the eye, but it's something to be aware of. I just see that they're coming out with a Lorac Pro 4 palette and you guys, I don't know what to do. Like, I kind of want to get it because, you know, I have the other three. I feel like it would complete my collection, but am I the only one that thinks it looks kind of boring? I mean, I feel like the Lorac Pro 3 was boring, but like in a nice way. I don't mind boring. I don't need every palette to be exciting and colorful. I just want it to be sort of, you know, usable and nice, but that one just looks a little bit dull. Let me know if you're thinking about picking it up down in the comments. The MAC Mineralized Blush in Warm Soul. I do not have that blush anymore. It did not survive. It was either my most recent declutter or the one before that, but I did love it. I did love that blush. I think in that video, I was talking about how I liked it as a blush and as an eyeshadow. That is something I do a lot in the summertime. Just use like a bronzer all over my face and then on my eyes as well for a really easy look. And I liked that blush. I really, really liked it. The reason that I ended up getting rid of it is because I felt like I didn't need it. I felt like it was too similar to my Wet n Wild blush in Apricot in the middle. I love this blush. This is on my face today. It is practically the same thing once you blend it out on the face. I did a side-by-side -side video a long time ago with like dupes, essentially like a dupe video where I did one side of my face with expensive makeup, one side with cheap makeup, and I used those two blushes and I couldn't tell the difference. And for me, if I'm gonna keep something, I'm gonna keep the cheap one because that is what makes me happy. I do love this blush. It's just a really nice, warm, peachy shade, perfect for summer. It does have some golden shimmer in it, but on the cheeks, for me, once I blend it out, it just looks sheeny and glowy. It doesn't look sparkly. 
the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Foundation. Now, I recently repurchased this like in the past four or five weeks and I've been testing it out again and I do still really like it. I remember what I loved about this foundation is that it's just really easy to wear and it's really glowy and beautiful and fresh on the skin, but I hadn't purchased it recently and I was kind of interested to try it again now that my skin has changed so much. I mean, it is really easy to love the foundation when you have perfect skin. I mean, going back and looking at that 2016 video, I almost cried you guys my skin was flawless and I can only hope that I get back to those days at some point but yeah I mean pretty much any foundation I look put on my face looked amazing so that is why I wanted to test this out again how does this hold up on skin that's a little bit more oily and much much more acne prone and I will say that I still like it I feel like it is a very solid medium coverage foundation. It actually does a pretty decent job of covering up some of the shit happening on my face. I mean, I always go in with concealer and powder, so I'm not expecting it to do that. I feel like it looks fresh. I feel like it lasts pretty well. I mean, it doesn't just like immediately dissolve on my face as it starts to get oily. Again, I'm not super oily, so I can't speak to that, but for like normal, slightly oily during the day skin, it's totally fine. The one thing I'm noticing about this now that I don't remember if this was happening to me before, probably because, you know, I'm two years older, but this foundation really does settle into my forehead lines. I find that any super liquidy foundation, that's just what happens because, you know, I got lines on my face and something's gotta go in them. That doesn't really stop me from wearing it. I mean, yes, maybe it ages me a little bit, but I don't really care because I love makeup and yes, there are lines on my face. I mean, I am 34 years old. I am very expressive with my face and I haven't had Botox, so it's just, the way it's gonna be. Another product I have not used much recently is the Becca Shimmery Skin Perfector Spotlight in Moonstone. Can you get this in like a normal full-size product? Because I got mine, it's a little mini, I got as part of a kit. Um, I don't know, I'll look it up. I'll have everything linked down below in the description box per use. This is a really nice cream highlighter because of the shade, at least for me. If you have very fair skin yet warm undertones, I think you might like this one because it is like a very, very pale golden champagne color. And sometimes highlighters that get pale get very kind of white and silvery. And sometimes I want something a little bit warmer. I also like the texture of this. I feel that it blends into my skin easily. I just tapped it onto my cheekbones after, after my foundation, but before I went in with powder. And I didn't go over it with a powder highlighter, so I feel like it gave me a very subtle glow. Honestly, I think if you're seeing some glow on my cheekbones, it's probably half this and half of the, of the foundation, which does, does give some nice light to my face. Um, but it is a nice one. I would not pay full price for this. I just wouldn't. But I'm also not super into highlighters these days, you guys. I find myself just forgetting to use them at all. Is that weird? I don't know. I feel like highlighters have been all the rage for so long and I know it's like I'm gonna get kicked off YouTube for saying this or something, but I'm just not, I'm not into highlighters these days. Um, but this is a good one if you're looking for an option like that. As for a drugstore alternative, I don't really have one exactly because I don't have a lot of drugstore cream highlighters. I mean, are there a lot? I feel like some brands have come out with some recently, but they're not just flooding the market. Um, I do like this makeup stick, the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Makeup Stick Highlight. This one is in When the Nude Strikes, and I, I would not compare it to the Becca at all in any way because this is pink, and that one's like yellow. So it's a totally different thing, but that's the only one I have to sh show you. So if you have any recommendations for something that would be more similar to the Becca, please let us all know down in the comments. I'm happy to see that there was a Wet n Wild product in that original video because would it even be a Robin's Cup of Tea video without a little Wet n Wild? I'm not sure. And the favorite I was loving back then was the Wet n Wild Coverall Pressed Powder. I believe they have changed that, right? Is there like a new format of that or a new formula? I'm not sure. Um, I liked that pressed powder. I don't know. It takes a lot for me to get excited about a translucent powder. I don't remember if I repurchased it maybe once haven't really been interested in purchasing it again. I do have a powder I'm obsessed with these days. You guys know, I've talked about it before, but for the sake of being thorough in this video, the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This powder is my favorite powder that has ever graced my face. It is amazing. I feel like however much of this I cake on, it never looks cakey. It just always looks natural. It does help me with oil. Like it helps keep me a little bit, a little bit more matte, but it doesn't make my face look dry or unnatural at all. So if you're in the market, I cannot recommend this one highly enough. 
The Urban Decay 24-7 Waterline Pencil in Legend. I mentioned in that video that somebody had given that to me and that I liked it, but I probably wouldn't spend my own money on it. And I, I stand by that. I don't even think I finished it. I think I eventually got rid of it because it dried out. Now keep in mind that I don't do the waterline thing enough. I am sure that if I put a black liner on my waterline every day, I would have used it up before it dried out. But I find that step in particular to be a little bit creepy. Am I the only one? I don't know, I just, I really don't enjoy it. Um, and I would not repurchase that. The liners I like more, my favorite eyeliners, both for the waterline and for just like a pencil liner over the lash line, um, are high end, but you can get them at a drugstore price and they are from Mally, the Mally Evercolor Starlight Waterproof Eyeliners. Now the thing to do about these is just wait, wait until the holidays because they always have a holiday set. It's usually three of them. And you definitely want to wait until the set because I got all three of these over the holidays this year. And I think between like the steep, steep discount of the holiday set and then like a little sale going on at Ulta, I got these for like $11, all three, which is an amazing price. These last forever. I have had some of these, like I have a little one here. Oop, where did it go? A little one here that I use today that I've literally had for years years and it has not dried out. I know that's disgusting, but I'm disgusting, but I sharpen it every time. So it's like fresh and clean, you know? Anyway, I am a huge fan of these and I love them. And I just, I don't have a ton of drugstore liners because again, this isn't a step that I do a lot in my makeup and I really like these. I think they are totally, totally worth the price if you catch them when they're on sale. This next product is gonna make me sad because you cannot get it anymore. This was limited edition the summer that I talked about it and I've held on to it because I love it so much and I'm just like waiting for it to come back, but it's not coming back. It is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Metallic Liquid Lipstick in my two, my two lips are sealed. I believe I had all four shades of these. I did a video on them and this is the one that was my favorite that like I still have that I have kept. This is what metallic lipsticks should be. I feel like all of these brands are putting out these metallic liquid lipsticks that are dry, matte, crusty, disgusting applications on your lips. And this is just a really nice, glossy, metallic, shimmery lip product. It's the perfect color. It's that golden, peachy shimmer. I mean, this is just goodness in a tube. But like I said, you can't get it anymore, and I can tell. I can tell mine is going bad. I couldn't tell you the last time I used it because it really is not good anymore. I just hold on to it because I loved it so much and I, and I want it to come back. And I don't have anything to show you to buy instead. That's what's so sad. Like I have never found anything just like that that is worth picking up. I have one thing in my collection that is similar, but it is high end. So I'm just gonna throw it out there in case you have it. I would never spend the money on this to buy it in the full size. I have a little mini of the NARS lip gloss in Orgasm. It's not as metallic and beautiful and wonderful as the Wet n Wild, um, but it is like a peachy golden shimmer. So if you have this, you can be comforted knowing that you have something somewhat similar. But like I said, I think this is overpriced. I just want Wet n Wild to, to bring my lipstick back. And yes, I'm aware Wet n Wild doesn't give a shit about me, but they should, and they should, they should bring that back. One more lip product today, and this is another thing that I sadly do not have anymore. It is the Almay Smart Shade Butter Kiss in Pink Light. Now, I loved these Almay lip products. I think by the time I mentioned it in this video that I'm talking about, it was already like a year old, so I have gotten rid of it by now. But those were a really nice substitute for the Revlon lip butters. Revlon and Almay are owned by the same company, so it was basically just like a new Revlon lip butter. I liked the pink shade. I thought it was really bright and fun and kind of like easy to wear in the summer. Very similar to what I have on today, which I'm going to show you. This is the, uh, what are these called? The Maybelline Color Sensational Shine Lipsticks. Are they called Shine Compulsion or something like that? I don't know. The new shiny one. I have mine in the shade Undressed Pink. I'm actually filming a video on this as we speak. So that's either going up right before or right after this video. If it's already up, I will link it up here for you. Um, but this is pretty much like a new Revlon Lip Butter or Almay Butter Kiss. I think they still make the Almay Butter Kiss, do they? I mean, sometimes when I'm in, st in a store, I still see them, but like a smaller selection. So I guess that would still be an option. I think this would be easier to get your hands on if you're looking for something like this. Um, the one thing I prefer about these is that they just have normal names. Like this one is called Undressed Pink. Those Almay Lip, lip Butters, they, they categorized them by shade, right? So there was light, light medium, and medium, which I thought was insane. Like, why would you make medium 
your deepest shade range and then they'd be like pink berry red um i don't know i just i would prefer to just have like normal lipsticks with with normal names so i do prefer that i think i like the smell of those almay lipsticks better because this smells like your typical maybelline lipstick um but i do th think this is a good option as well but obviously the most important thing to do today is to get an update from tut tut who has been a member of this family for two years now tut what do you think what do you, do you have any thoughts to share? Do you still like these products? Actually, I would say you pretty much hated them during the first video. You were pretty vocal about that. I will say that nowadays, Tut is um, napping a lot more during my filming sessions, which is probably good. I mean, it was hard to get a word out edgewise before. Um, he's still really, really chatty. But normally he like gets that all out of his system while I'm doing my makeup and letting the lights warm up. And by the time I actually start filming, he's he's taking a nap or something. He is currently asking to go out into the living room because, okay, I'll give you guys a little mini tot update. We've had tot for two years now and he has just recently, like in the past two or three months, discovered that we have fish. That's right, we've had fish this entire time. We've had fish for years before we even got Tut and he has suddenly discovered their presence in our house and it is now all he wants to do. I mean, it is 24 seven, his number one hobby. I think he even considers it his job to stare at the fish and he sits in the chair next to the aquarium and just waits and just waits. And then every once in a while, will like attack the aquarium and try to like get through the glass. And it is hilarious because you know, it's glass and a lot of times he just like totally eats it and falls on the floor. I mean, it's kind of insane. So that's a little Tut update for you two years later. He's still my favorite. Tut and I were like two peas in a pod, right Tut? He, he will always let you know how he feels about things, which I respect. So that is it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Please let me know, is there anything in your collection that you are currently using and still loving from two years ago? Leave those recommendations for us down in the comments because I feel like if they're that good, we all need to check them out. And I will see you guys here very soon. Bye. Yes, I just checked for like the third time while filming this video to make sure my microphone is on.